Okay, so we're going to continue today with exercise 121. Um, and the, the purpose of today is to start to work uh, in plan and elevation view. Um, this was actually kind of suggested in the architectural advisory committee meeting uh, last year when we were talking about what should we be teaching the students and, and what sorts of things need to be reinforced and, and what have you. So uh, the relationship between plan and elevation was something that we talked about making sure that, that uh, you guys understood well, uh, reinforced in a variety of classes. Obviously you're going to get this um, in 130 quite a bit, um, but it doesn't hurt to have it here as well. Um, so we're going we're gonna to draw an elevation view uh, of this plan today. We're going to talk primarily about layers, how layers work. And we're going to talk a little bit about line weights, um, colors, that sort of thing. We're going to talk about a command called array, which will basically create an infinite length line starting at a point in one direction, uh, which is really useful as a construction line um, for what we're doing. Um, and then we'll talk about kind of the relationship of, of space and, and, and how these drawings can be drawn. Um, the, the idea today is to get a little bit more detail in your drawing uh, and ultimately to create all four elevations. If you don't finish all four elevations, it's okay. You don't have to finish all four. Um, but if you can practice with it, now's a good time to practice with it. Uh, next class in exercise 122, we're going to have the whole day working on your um, assignment 105s. So you have the whole day to actually draw it up and I'll help you and that sort of thing. Uh, then after next class, we'll move into kind of how do we create output, how do we deal with layouts, how do we, how do we get printable, scalable drawings out of AutoCAD. Uh, so I know it's a crash course in AutoCAD, the idea being that it's, it should be enough such that you can actually produce a drawing. Um, we will also talk about, once we get into SketchUp, how to bring AutoCAD stuff into SketchUp and use that as a backbone for what you're drawing uh, and vice versa. So there is logic to this, but we have to keep working through kind of the basic commands in AutoCAD uh, to get there. So um, I have a slightly more developed version of the, the plan that was shown last uh, class. You'll also notice that on the back of your uh, sheet, I have suggested line weights for a variety of things if you were to go print this, um, which gives you an idea of kind of what's, what's appropriate if you're doing a drawing. Um, line weights are always subjective, so this is what I think looked pretty good. Uh, I did run this by Tatiana, the 130 instructor uh, who deals with graphics stuff, and she thought this looked pretty reasonable as well. So at least there's two of us that are kind of in agreement that this, this is a nice looking uh, set of line weights. Uh, I, I had this... Um, this was a request last semester of give me the appropriate line weight for a variety of things. So I show this as a reference, um, but of course you can change it how you want. So once again, I've tried to script this so that you can follow it along step by step as we go through it uh, to hopefully uh, really understand the things that we're doing and then be able to repeat it when you're doing your, your floor plan as well. So uh, we're going to start with layers today. Let me just move this over and I actually want my other mouse because this mouse is too touchy. So hold on a second. Okay, so um, we're going to start with the layers command. And in our home panel up here at the top, there's a section devoted to layers, which is right here. Uh, we didn't talk anything about layers last class because we just were concentrating on drawing. Uh, and as a, as a result, everything was drawn on AutoCAD's default layer, which is layer zero. Um, when, we, when we start talking about layers, there's kind of a few things that are critical for you to understand early on. Uh, the first up here is that there is a current layer, and it's listed here as zero. Uh, it's in this bottom section. And if we click on it and drop down, there may or may not be other layers listed below it. Uh, those are the active layers in the drawing. Uh, we'll talk about how to create layers in just a second. The other kind of critical button here is, is right up here in the upper left corner. It says Layer Properties. Uh, when you click on that, you will get this little floating window that will appear. This is the Layer Properties window. Uh, you can also get to this by just typing Layer. It will, it will bring up the same thing. Um, so I would encourage you all to, to open uh, your drawing from last class and then follow along with me if you can. Uh, because it'll help you kind of get this, this set up to go. So I'll give you a little bit of time to make sure that your, your drawing from last class is up.
Okay, so we're going to continue along here. Um, in this layer uh, properties manager, I already have a few layers listed. You may only have layer zero listed by default, um, but it's okay. Uh, I have one that's called guides, and I have one that's called interior, and I have one that's the text and dimensioning. Uh, this is because this is a file that I've used before, and I'll, I've already created some of the layers. So uh, what I'm going to ask you to do first is to create two layers. Uh, the first is going to be called South Elevation, and the other is going to be called Guides. Um, so when I go to create a new layer, there's a little icon uh, that looks like a, kind of a parallelogram with a star on it. Uh, that's the New Layer button. And when I click on the New Layer button, we'll see a new layer. It's called Layer 1 right now. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and change this. We'll call this South Elevation. Now, I should mention that in, in reality, there are naming conventions for layers. There are, um, there's, there's a whole AIA standard uh, set of layers. In practice, most architects don't follow that um, because we like to create our own layers and we like to name them whatever we want. Uh, if you're working in a, in a larger office, a lot of times there is a set of naming conventions for how they name layers and, and where th certain things belong. Um, I will, uh, I'll give you a little handout a little bit later on that show you what the default layers are uh, based on the AIA standards, but for right now we're just going to keep things simple and call it South Elevation. Um, so I've renamed that elevation to South, e or that layer to South Elevation. Now we've got a few options that come with uh, our particular layer. We have the ability to turn it on or turn it off. We have the ability to freeze it, which is virtually the same thing. Um, we have the ability to lock it, which means it will be displayed but not selectable. Right? We have the ability to set a color, a default color. Notice the default color is white. We have the ability to set a line type. This would be as a hidden line, is it a continuous line, is it uh, you know, a dash line, whatever. We have the ability to set a default line weight. Uh, let me just make this a little bit larger here. Right? Uh, we can adjust transparency if we want. Uh, we can go with a plot style, which is not something we're going to explain about. Uh, plot here determines is the layer going to print or not, uh, which is a very useful thing. Uh, and this has to do with viewport freezes and stuff, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So the next layer that I'm going to create is the layer called Guides. Uh, so you'll create a new layer. Once again, you'll rename it to be Guides. I already have the Guides layer, so I'm going to get rid of that new layer. Uh, and then you're going to change a couple things. One, you're going to change the color, and I think I asked you in this exercise to change it to be red. Let me just double check here. Yep. And under plot here, I want you to click on the little printer to make sure that it has a little red slash in front of it. That means it's not going to plot. Okay. Uh, because because this is just a set of guides, we don't want it to plot uh, down the road. So I'm going to have that one turned off, uh, and I'm also going to set the guides layer to be the current layer. And that's something that's important in AutoCAD. We have to think about what layer we're on when we're drawing. So everything that we draw will go on the layer with the green check mark next to it. So in order to change the green check mark, I'm just going to double click on guides, and you see the little green check mark changes, uh, and it's right there. So I can go ahead and close this, and we can come back to my drawing. Okay. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the south elevation down here, but I'd like to reference this drawing if I can. Uh, and let's look a little bit at this drawing so you can see it. This outer line is the edge of the roof. right? The inner line here is obviously the edge of my building. So I'm going to use something called a ray to be able to draw some guidelines, some construction lines that are going to help me draw this. Uh, and so I'll type ray, um, and it's going to ask me to specify a start point. And so I'll specify this corner of the building, and I'm going to drag my mouse down. I'm not actually clicking on any button. I'm going to drag it straight down until it snaps to being vertical, uh, and then I'll just click. And I'll hit enter when I'm done. And if I zoom out, you can see that it's created a red line that is almost infinite in length. And the further I zoom out, the more we'll see of it. Right? Let me come back up here, and we're going to repeat the ray command. Ray. And I'm going to start at this corner and drag down and click. I'm going to repeat over here. Repeat ray. Uh, I just right click to repeat the last command. And we'll 
extend that line straight down as well. And so one of the advantages of these rays is it gives us uh, some guidelines when we go to create the building itself. And so when I, when I want to create the building, right, and I might create a few more rays uh, for the windows here while I'm there. Let's do a ray for each of these sides of the window. Down there as well. Okay, so I have those as my guides. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a point for the ground, and it can be completely arbitrary, but I don't want this to appear on the guides layer anymore, so I want to change my active layer. So as we've done before, I can click on layer properties, and then I can double click on south elevation, and I'll change my active layer to be south elevation. There's another way of doing it. I can choose the layer from this list, so if I was on guides, I can switch my layer to be south elevation, right? And it'll say what my current layer is right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm now that I've got my south elevation layer as the current layer, I'm going to go ahead and draw a line. And this line, it doesn't really matter where it occurs, but it needs to occur at some place down below um, my uh, my drawing here. And so I'll draw it across, and I'm going to draw it wider than where my um, lines are pulled down. Okay, That's kind of a, an arbitrary place to start. And so I'll start right here. Let me repeat the line command. I'll start right here and I'm going to draw the first wall. And this represents the outer wall uh, of this little piece. So I'm going to go up here uh, and let's see. If we had an 8 foot ceiling plus a roof plus a foundation, well we'll do the foundation afterward. Uh, so let's say from finished floor to finished floor, I don't know, we'll do uh, do nine feet right now. Something like that. And then I'm going to come across to this point like that. And then I'll come down to that point. And that gives me the first piece of my elevation, okay, which would be this end of the building right here. Right there it is. I'm going to continue another line that goes from this point over to this edge and then down and that gives me the next piece of my building okay now one of the nice things that we can do is I can turn off my guides so I'm gonna click the little light bulb here and the guides go away and we can see temporarily okay what I've drawn okay so I'm starting to draw in this building so let's turn those guides back on and let's think about the windows here so I'm gonna pick line again I'm gonna zoom in and uh, the windows, right Right now this is my floor, so I'm going to want my windows to go up from this point. And one of the things in AutoCAD that you can do is you can, of course, draw a line that goes up, but you can also move your cursor a certain distance from a point before you start the line in the first place. Uh, and this is something, Sarah, that we talked about uh, last class, but I think it's relevant to everybody. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a point, and, and as I come in here, it's just like a snap. Right? I get that little X, but as I move up, see how I create a dotted line, and I also leave behind a little tiny green tick right here? Right? That little point is a reference point, and now I can specify a distance up on that dotted line. So I could say that I want my bottom sill of my window to be two feet up. So I'll type two feet and enter, and now when I start to draw, right, my line's going to start two feet from that first intersection. And I can draw across. So I'll repeat that over here. So once again, I'll do a line. I'm going to establish a point at the intersection. Then I'm going to just push my mouse up. I'm not clicking anything yet. I get that dotted line. And then I can specify two feet. And that'll be my start point, And I can draw across. Okay. Now I need to draw the rest of the window here. So let me go ahead and draw up. And this two feet is completely unrealistic because it's a kitchen. So let me go ahead and move these up. So I'm going to select both of those. I'm going to use the move command right here. And it's going to ask me to specify base point, right, which is where do I want to move from. So I'm going to move from here. And then I'm going to specify the distance that I want it to move. Um, since this is inside a kitchen, the windows have to be taller than the counter. Uh, so we'll do you know, maybe three foot six. So I need to do another one foot six inches. 
There we go. Now they're actually tall enough. Okay. Now I need to create the rest of this window. So the, the normal height for a window up here would be six foot eight. Uh, that's kind of the standard top of windows. So let me start as, as a reference point here and I'll go up six foot eight. Now I'm specifying these uh, these sizes based on stuff that exists in, in practice, like construction examples. If you make these numbers up, it's perfectly fine. There's no right and wrong answer right now. It's not a construction class. I'm not going to test you on your code knowledge. doesn't matter. I'm just trying to be accurate as I start to draw things. So we'll go ahead and draw across here. And I'll hit enter. And then I'm going to repeat. Oops. And I'll use this as a guide point to drag across to there. And then I'll draw that part of the line. And then let's go ahead and draw the sides. So I'll pick line, and I'll draw the side. Line, and I'll draw the side. And I'm just hitting Enter when I'm done with the command, and then going back and repeating. And repeating. OK, so let me go ahead and do these two windows. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the guides layer. So I'm going to switch my layer to guides. Right, one of the nice things about changing the guides layer to be red is it's obvious when I draw it's going to be in that layer. And I'm going to use array again. And I'm going to specify each side of this window. So there's going to be one, two, three. All right, so I have those coming in. I can set the bottom of this window. Since this is a more of a bedroom window, we can go a little bit lower with them. So let me go up two feet this time, and we'll come across. Oh, so I didn't change my layer, right? The nice thing is it was red, so it was obvious that I didn't change my layer. So I'd like to change this line, and I wouldn't like, I don't want to have to draw it again. So if I select the line and change my layer from the shortcut to south elevation, it'll change that to south elevation. Notice I didn't change my default layer or my active layer. So I still have to go back and change that to south elevation, which it is now. Let me go ahead with my line tool and continue. Like that. I'll set the tops of my windows at the same height. So I'm going to set my point there, drag across, I get that dotted line. And we'll create that. And we'll drag across and create this point. And we'll do a line, and I'll come down. And same thing here. And same thing here. <coughs> okay, so if I temporarily turn off my guides layer, we can see that I'm starting to build out the side of this building. Okay? And it would be nice if I put in some, some roof, uh, and I haven't drawn the roof completely yet, uh, but let's say that I want a, uh, a sloping roof on this. right? The halfway point of my roof, let me do a, another command here. Go turn back on my guides, and then I'm also going to make my guides active. And you can, if there's too many guides here, like for example, I've already created the window, we could take each set of the window guides and delete them so that we're not cluttering ourselves. Uh, and I'm going to draw guides for the roof positions. So let's go ahead and draw uh, array. I'll specify a start point there. I'll specify a start point there. And I'm going to do one more that's in the center of this roof, something like that. Uh, so I could do a flat modernist roof, probably the easiest strategy um, to, to draw. I could do a sloping roof, uh, or I could do some combination of both. If I was doing a flat roof, right, relatively easy, I have eaves that overhang on either side, um, and I wouldn't worry about the center. If not, if I wanted a, a, set, a, a sloping roof, right, I would want to have an idea of what my uh, slope would be. And so if I want to know what that slope would be, um, 
I'm going to draw a line, right? And I'm going to start at this point, right? And I'm going to go up, right? I could calculate the angle, I guess, is the best. So if I had a 6 and 12, for example, I could calculate the angle. Um, let me try to explain this better. So when you have a root, if this is too technical, just keep going. Right. So when you have a root, and we're looking at it in section, uh, they're usually denoted by a particular slope. Right. So a low slope root might be a 4 and 12. And if it's a 4 and 12, it's going to go up 4 inches for 12 inches of run. Something like that. A standard root in like a ranch house, a 50s ranch or something like that, is usually a 4 and 12, maybe a 6 and 12. Right? Newer construction is going to tend to be a 6 and 12. It means we're going up 6 and we're going over 12. Right? If we're up in the mountains where we have a lot of snow and we wanted stuff to shed off, we'd get higher. Right, we might go to uh, a 12 and 12, right, which would mean we go up 12 and over 12, so this would be 12 and this would be 12. There's, of course, an in between in here that's an 8 and 12, right, depending on what you're after. A really, really low sli slope roof might be a 2 and 12, right, and the truth is even a flat roof has a little bit of slope too, but uh, a flat roof might be a, like a quarter of an inch in 12 for a flat roof. Right? So it's very little slope. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You don't have to draw that many. You can draw a line. So I'm going to do a 6 and 12 root, which is kind of standard, right? And so a 6 and 12 root is exactly half of a 12 and 12 root. A 12 and 12 root is going to be a 45 degree angle, right? So this would translate here to a 45 degree, right? 6 and 12 would be half of that, which would be 22.5 degrees. So I can do it in a couple different ways. The easiest way would be to create a little guide for myself where I drew a line that went up six inches and over 12 inches. Right? I have that little guide there. I'm going to switch my um, layer to be the south elevation and I'm going to draw a line from here to there. Right? So obviously this line is nowhere near long enough. So I'm going to use a command that's called extend. And it's probably under trim, there's extend. Okay. So when I click extend, select objects, right? we're going to select this, we're going to select this, and we're going to select this. And I'll go ahead and hit enter. Right? And we're going to extend. And it's going to ask for what what do we want to extend. So I'm going to click on this end of the object and see how it extends the line up that way. And I'm going to click on that end of the object, which extends the line backwards. Right. So it's going to be to whatever the other sides are. The other option to doing this would be to create a line and to actually specify a distance or or a um, an angle. Right. So I can press Tab and see how my my um, it's hidden underneath that box, text box there. See that little white value that has a degree in it? Right? This is where I could specify 22.5. And see, it's going to be stuck on that 22.5, and then I could draw my line at whatever length I wanted it to be. It's just another way of drawing. So I have this line that's been extended. I'm going to just mirror it across the center. So let me do mirror, which is also right up here under the mirror command. And we're going to mirror across those. So we get that part of the roof. Okay. Let me go ahead and draw. Obviously this is going to have a little bit of trim on it. So let me draw. I'm going to use offset to create a little bit of fascia here. So I'll say offset. My distance is going to be um, I'll do a 2 by 8 And we'll offset there, and we'll offset there. Create that end of the house. All right, let me go ahead and draw a line in the center. And I'd like this, I have two options. Right? I can draw this that has an eave that goes sideways like this, which is fine. Or I could extend this so that it had a flat eave. It just depends on the style of your house a little bit. 
Um, so I could say extend, click on extend, pick these two objects, enter, and extend that down, in which case I'll get that in. Let me hide for just a second the guides so you can see the end. Do you see how I, how I did that? Where that was straight versus that being sideways? It's just a matter of preference what you want your eaves to look like. Obviously, if you had a gutter on the eave, it would have to be straight down so that the gutter can hang on it. Anyway, let me go ahead and do a little trim here. So I'm going to go back to trim. Select objects. There they are. I'll hit enter. I'll get rid of this and get rid of that. I really should also trim out part of this building, so let me go ahead and repeat trim. Select this. Oops. Hit enter, and then we'll get rid of those two pieces and these two pieces as well. Okay. So if I were to continue, I wanted to draw this side of the building. Let me turn back on my guides. Oops. There we go. And guides is now active. Let me create another ray. I'm going to specify from this point down. I'll hit enter. And I'm also going to create a ray that that starts here and goes this direction so I can kind of see what I'm trying to do. Okay. Likewise, I can create one down here that kind of shows the bottom of this roof. And so let me go ahead with my line tool. I'm going to draw across to there. A repeat line, I'm going to draw across to there. Ah, so I didn't change my layer, so let me select these two. I'm holding down shift to select both, hopefully. Yeah, I didn't have to hold down shift. Let me switch to my south elevation. There we go. A couple more. Oops, let me switch to south elevation as my current layer. I'll draw this. And one more line down to there. Now I'm going to trim out again, so let me type trim, or I can select trim from up above here, and we'll trim off this piece. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn off the guides layer so I can kind of clarify. Right, This I couldn't trim because it was floating. I still have one little piece to trim here. that and let me also get rid of this piece right and you can start to see how I constructed that end of the roof Does that make sense so far okay so I've done this side elevation now of course I can add more detail I could add window frames uh, and that sort of thing I'll show you an example that has a few more details added um, so that you can see it but there comes a point where I may want to do each other elevation Right, so this would be the south elevation. Let's move on and do the east elevation. So I'll create a new layer by going to the layers menu. I'll create a new layer. I'll we'll call this east. If I can type elevation. Right. I'm going to make the east elevation layer active for right now. The default settings are just fine. Let me go ahead and close this. And I'm going to use the ray command again but I want to switch to my guide layer. Ah. I turn on my guides, there we go. And I'm going to start with ray. And I'm going to create a few rays that go off of these corner points. One. So the other factor here is that there actually is a relationship between this elevation and this elevation, as well as there is a relationship between the floor plan. And this has to do with how you do um, your drawing convention. So if we start with a plan view of an object, something like that, right? The side view of this object can be pulled down just like I just did. Right, or we pulled it down. 
if we pull a side view across this way, all right, we're going to draw this view. Let me just a little bit. We're going to draw this view sideways. It's going to look. There's a relationship, if we put a 45 degree line here, where we can actually pull a line to meet this 45 point and then pull it up and it's going to meet this line. Because this height here is the same as this height here. Likewise, we can pull a line to here, pull a line up to here. Oops, looks like it's going to drop a little bit. And we can have a relationship like that as well. Okay? It has to do with basic drawing convention. So this would be East. Right, this would be south. Right, we can do the same thing if we extend our lines up this way. There's our 45. And here, and here, and here, and here. We can all pull up. So we go across. There's our first piece. There's our second piece. So these are all interrelated. It takes a little bit of getting used to in your head to, to see this. Um, but it's kind of a, a great convention of drawing because you don't have to measure anything. And so if you can learn how to draw this way, it makes things a, lot, a whole lot faster. So I've drawn the first elevation. I'd like to re continue this process on the right side here. And I'd also like there to be a 45 degree line that I can reflect across. So I'm going to create a guy or a ray. And I'm going to start at this point. But in specif instead of specifying a distance, I'm going to press tab, and my selection is going to go from this distance to being the degree mark. So I'll press tab, and I'm going to get to the degree mark. Now, it's in 360 degrees. It starts at 0. right? We go up. There's your traditional 45, and we come around. So in this instance, uh, it would be... 360 minus 45, which would be, uh, if my brain can work this morning, 315. Correct me if I'm wrong. All right. Uh, 315. There it is at 315. I'll go ahead and click to end. And that creates that 45 degree line from this point. All right now. I can create a ray again, and we can go from this intersection back up. I need one at the base here. I'm going to repeat and go back up. And now I can draw right, a line there. Oops. I need to switch my layer to be the east elevation. Let me also switch my active layer to be the east elevation. And then we'll draw this up. So this would be the top of the roof. And the roof would start from right there and go to right here. Okay. Uh, let's see here. We've got the sides of our building. Repeat line. It's going to be right there. And it's going to be right there. We also have an end of our building, so let me go to right here, there, here to there. I have this point, which is the bottom edge of that eave. So let me come over here, and draw, and then let me do a ray instead. Guides, ray. here it's approximately right there for now ah, I keep forgetting to change my layer sorry East elevation Go right here there I'm really not changing again East elevation. Switch to east elevation. Um, so let me go ahead and finish constructing this. I need a couple more rays. Switch to guys. 
Ray. We need our roof points here, so I'll put one there. Put one there. And I actually really need the upper part of this. And let me pick one from the center. Down. Perfect. So we're going to start from that point at the center, which is on the ridge. And I need to drop that 6 and 12 roof. So I'm going to do that little cheater method where I'm going to go down 6 inches here, over 12 inches as a guide. I'll hit enter. I'm going to switch my layer to be the east elevation. And I'll draw a line from this point to that point. And then I'll use the extend command to extend it down. So let me go ahead and go to extend, which is underneath trim. Select objects, like that. Then I'm going to click on the end of this white. It's going to go to the next line. That's not far enough, so let's go a little bit further. Okay, there it is hitting the outside edge. All right. I'll go ahead and hit enter because I'm done. And let me mirror this. Tool there. I'm going to mirror from here across the center line. I have both sides of that. Okay. Now I'm going to do an offset to create this end of the roof. So offset. My distance is the same as last time. I'm going to offset there. Offset there. And do one more extend. 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 Draw a little vertical line there. there. And I also need one more set of lines. I'm going to draw out. There. This is the end of the roof. Hold on, I'm going to make the, uh, the guides clear up here. Let me go ahead and turn off the guides so you can start to see this house appear. All right, so you can see that I'm generating it from the side there. And I know you have to kind of turn your head sideways to see it. Uh, the, the easier and, and the longer you do this, the easier you can draw these things right side up, upside down. It makes no difference, right? Uh, and I'll, I'll talk through how we rotate these after the fact when we go to print them. Um, but learning to draw them this way is a really healthy, uh, good way of learning to draw. So let me go ahead and finish this up with an end line here and a line that goes from there to there. And then we need to do a little bit of trimming things up. So let me go to trim. And we'll get rid of this and this, 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 oops. Okay, and so now, oops, one more little trim. There and there. And I'll draw that center. And now we have this side of the roof. Okay. Now, I still need to put my, my windows in. There's a window here, and there's a window, or there's a door over here. Um, so I can go and turn back on my guides. And I can turn on, or make that the current layer. I can use Ray again, and go from there. there and then I can draw in the window that would appear right here okay so I don't want you to have to watch me draw the whole thing I will however bring up um, let me save this I'm gonna save it um, as an AutoCAD drawing uh, which should be the default here uh, if you click on save and you haven't saved your work before it will bring up the ability to save it as an AutoCAD 2013 drawing that's what you need to re-edit your work uh, so I'll go ahead and click save then I'm going to open, I have one that's the previous version. Oops, sorry. Same thing, same rays that have extended out. Let me turn off my ray. Uh, in this version that I did, I did flat roofs instead of um, pitched roofs. Um, it doesn't really matter, but this gives you an idea of there's the two windows, there's the two windows, right? There's the door, there's a little set of stairs there, there's another window there. Right, and each of these, this is drawn upside down. 
right? But that's fine. If I turn the guides back on, right, you can see my reflection at 45 degree lines going out. Same thing, 45 degree lines going out. So everything has a relationship around. You can see how I pull all those measurements around. Does that make sense? A little bit? Right? What I'm going to have you try to do, start with the south elevation, see how you do. Right? If you get through the south elevation, do the east elevation. Right? Those are the two ones that I did as examples, and we'll see if we can get to the upside down one uh, or not. Okay? So I'm going to turn you loose. Uh, I will be here again. If you have any questions, you get stuck at all, please, please ask me, and we'll get you through it. Um, the one other thing that I will mention, uh, the line weights are on the back. Right? If, if line weights are too much for you to deal with today, don't worry about it. We'll discuss it again next class. Actually, it's probably best if we discuss it next class because I think you have enough on your plate. So let's just plan on the line weight next class. I'll give you another version of this next class. Okay?